we're going to look at teams function in the platform version or level of follow-up boss. So there are different levels to a follow-up boss account, but platform is the highest level, allows you to have the most users. I believe it has 30 users by default. Um, and certainly you can add users beyond that. But there's a really interesting feature that I wanted to cover a bit here. Um, if you go to admin teams, you're gonna see any teams you've created. Now there's always gonna be a default team and it says here obviously default team including uh, all members. So if you click on that, you're gonna see all of your users in your account. This would include lenders, uh, anyone who is a paying or paid user uh, in your account. But the really interesting thing about Teams is they do a lot of things beyond just this actual functionality. They also do not affect any sort of lead routing or anything like that. It's largely an organizational thing. So for example, if you had two locations, you can add a Texas team and a Georgia team and one of the best parts of that is when you do that, actually, I'll, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to create this team. I'm just going to call it the Georgia team. And you can select the uh, emoji that you want to use. So I don't know that there are state emojis per se, but uh, let's do a peach. We're in Georgia. Uh, and then you select who should be on that team. So for now, I'm just going to select myself and Bridget. So now we've created a new team here. So you can see now we've got a Georgia team. If we click into that, we can see who's on that team as well as their role. This also adds some additional functionality of a team leader here. And a team leader is a really good way to give someone access to view all of the leads assigned to people on this team without necessarily giving them admin access. So if you're a brokerage, this is a great way, if you have teams at your brokerage, you can help them be able to see their own agents leads, but not necessarily go in and change some of the deeper uh, features that they might be able to do as an admin. So you just check this team leader box. You obviously are gonna to wanna to educate them that you've done this. It does change a few things in their account. Uh, they may suddenly, depending on their settings, see a bunch of leads that aren't theirs and be confused by that. So um, obviously let someone know if you're going to do this. But this team leader function is really handy. And again, it's tied to this team. So if this was a real team, if there was a team lead there, you check this box, then they'd be able to see the activity and leads of other people in this team. This also opens up an additional role here of ISA account team lead. And it's similar to this team leader in the sense that they can see all the leads, but again, it, it's, a, it's a lighter level um, of um, you know, ability to change things in the account. It also is um, really great because it, it would allow, say an ISA or someone to that effect, to, again, still come in here, do at mention, see other people's leads, um, it's a really, really great feature. I mean, again, it works per this specific team. So um, that is a cool way to do that. But again, be sure that person is aware so that all of a sudden they don't just see all these leads and realize they aren't all tied to them necessarily. One of the best features of this that I really love is you can assign smart lists to a team. And it's such a great feature because if you're gonna onboard somebody new to the team, if you add them in the appropriate group the first time, so if you come here and hit add team members, if you add them to this group, they're automatically gonna have the smart list of that group. So for example, if your Georgia team and your Texas team have different smart lists, if you attribute those smart lists, and I'll show you how to do that real quick, go to people and then manage lists, and you can manage these again by team. So now you can see here I've got the teams to check or uncheck as far as who would get this specific smart list. So again, a really great feature can make your onboarding really easy if you have teams in different markets, if you have different ISA smart lists, if you have a QA team, whatever those things are, there are a lot of really cool things you can do by organizing people into teams. And people can be on multiple teams. So a user here 
In fact, it'll even show you, uh, and you can even edit that as well here. So if they need to come off that team, you could do it here. Um, but it's a really great feature. But again, I want to be super clear. This is largely for organizational and reporting purposes. This does not affect your lead routing in any way. That's all done in lead flow in groups. So I just want to be really clear about this. It's really a more uh, organizational feature. But as I mentioned, if you hop into reporting, you can now view that reporting by teams. So, hey, just show me the reporting for my Georgia team. Leaderboard is the same way. So you'll have a separate leaderboard for your separate teams. So nothing super fancy or crazy, but a great feature that I think a lot of people are not taking full advantage of. So again, admin, teams, you can play around with this. If you delete a team, it doesn't delete the users, uh, but definitely a, a cool thing to play around with to be able to, again, consolidate or kind of organize people in your account what they potentially have access to, as well as quick ways to view reporting and other features by team.